say thank you. Good morning. I'm going to go ahead and worship God this morning. <laughs> Before we jump in, we just want to give everyone an opportunity just to transition. I know sometimes coming from home into the sanctuary is a different transition for everyone. So we're just going to allow everyone just to posture themselves and get yourself in a place of worship if you're not already there. something to Jesus right now, something that just comes from your heart, from your connection, from your relationship, from the testimonies, from the good things that have happened this week in your life, for his faithfulness, for his provision. For his constant companionship. We just love you, Jesus. Just say we love you. Praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to 
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down, he's faithful through
Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's heaven
It has nothing to do with our circumstances. It has nothing to do with what's in our hand or not in our hand. It's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of you, Jesus. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said it, and will he not do it? Hath he spoken it, and will he not make it good? God will always make his word good. Whatever he has promised us, whatever he has said about us, he is going to make it good. He cannot go back on his word. Can't get enough. I'll spend my days running 
gift life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Is your prayer in our lungs? So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. Is your prayer in our lungs? So we pour out our praise to you.
white whiteboard and I just see God's hand just wiping off lies and perspectives that have not been of him. He's just wiping off those things that we've just believed but haven't been true. To see him wiping that off. And you say, well, I, we always talk about lies. That's because it's all about truth. And the truth is what sets you free. The truth is what brings you to a life of abundance, a life of wholeness. But I just feel like, I feel like today he's just wiping things off your whiteboard. And I just see that happening in the spirit. So when you wonder sometimes what's going on right now, we're not singing a song, we're just kind of floating around waiting on what is God doing in the room? What is he doing? So we just, we just put ourselves before you right now and God's, we say wipe off whatever you want to wipe off. Wipe it off of our whiteboard right now. Just wipe it off. Go ahead. We say yes. We say yes. All of a sudden, maybe your problems don't look so big. Your challenges don't look so difficult. The mountains don't look too high anymore. Because of what he's doing, you don't even have to know what that lie was if you just see life the way he's saying it. And that thing that you've held on against somebody right now just doesn't seem that important anymore because it's coming off coming off. He's just erasing it. He's erasing it. I feel like there's people here that you've held things against yourself and he's wiping it off today. Be okay with seeing yourself differently than you've ever seen yourself before because you're going to see yourself through the eyes of Jesus. How much he loves you, how much he treasures you, how much he lavishes his love on you. Sometimes we can't receive all the goodness of God because we just think we're not capable of receiving it, that we shouldn't. And we withhold from ourselves what God is willingly and freely giving to us.
And I've heard it said that even a chiropractor can increase your hearing ability when you're completely aligned. And I just believe that he's just opening this up right here, right now, just in this still quietness to get before him, to lay out before him and allow him just to realign. Don't be afraid. We're a house where this is just normal. So just come up or wherever you're at in the room, if you're able just to lay out, just allow him to, to work on you in this moment. expectation in this moment. I release expectation. I release the faith of God that he is moving as you're laying there and allow him to work on you that something is happening. He's realigning you. He's making corrections. I just release faith. I just release expectation. I release the testimony of many times of laying before him and I get up a different person. I get up changed that I'm never the same. Ooh, yeah. yeah, and I just want to encourage you. It's so powerful. Pat just shared even how physically her spine was hurting, her back was hurting, and it, something popped and snapped into place right before Kristen gave the word, and all the pain left. And, you know, God created the natural realm to prophesy to us what is happening in the spiritual realm. And so when you come back into that place of right alignment, pain will leave you. Pain that you've been carrying in your heart, pain that you've been carrying in your body even, from places where maybe you've not submitted to God or you've not forgiven or whatever it is that God is bringing back into right alignment with his word and with his way, you'll be set free. So I just encourage you, take this moment, say, Holy Spirit, we're in a time of fasting and seeking God. Allow the Spirit to search you and just reveal to you if there's any area that is out of alignment. And you may have a clue if you have an area that's been causing you pain. You know, oh, God, what, how do I align with you in that area? What, what wrong belief do I have? Or what am I holding on to that I need to let go of? And my pain's gone. I've been, like, for three days, like, having, like, pain right here. And um, my, this whole muscle's been, like, super tight. And I've been, I actually started the day I was with you guys in prayer. And then it's just been so annoying. And it's it makes it, me look like a really old person when I walk sometimes. But I felt like I, I was, like, doing movements, and I'm like, eh, it's gone. Yeah, so even physical healing if you need alignment. <laughs> but allow the spirit to move on you right now. I just want to take a few minutes with this because this is really important.
about to jerk your neck really hard where you know this is how people get killed. <laughs> but you trust his intention. You trust his skill. And God is not going to destroy you. He is not going to kill you. He's going to kill your flesh. But he's going to give you life. He's going to give you freedom. He's going to release you into a place of peace and joy and the fullness of his spirit, righteousness, peace, and joy in his Holy Spirit every day. So if there's something you need to give to God, to surrender to God right now, I just want you to speak it out to him quietly. Just say what it is. Say, God, I give this to you. In this fast, I surrender this offense. I surrender this addiction. I surrender whatever it may be that you've been wrestling with God with. I surrender this place where I've wanted to understand before I trusted you, where I've accused you or blamed you for something. God, forgive me. Forgive me. How dare I accuse you, God, of being not good? And just surrender those things, those offenses, those hard places. And I just see the Holy Spirit just pouring oil over your heart, over your body, over your mind. Yeah. We've tried to comfort ourselves, and it doesn't work. And it just draws us further away from God, the true source of comfort. Yeah, so we just confess our dependence on you, God, our need for you. Yeah, blessed are those who are poor in spirit who recognize their need for God. We just submit to that place of needing you, leaning into you. As I was worshiping earlier, the Lord kept speaking uh, freedom, the word freedom over me. And uh, as Katie was saying, this is a time for God to uh, wipe away the whiteboard of whatever it is that's holding you back or holding you down. And so God took me back to a scenario and uh, he was saying, hey, this was for freedom um, that the things rolled out the way they did. And uh, I immediately thought of Galatians 5.1, which says, for freedom, Christ has set you free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And I think everyone in this room would say the last two years have been some of the most confusing, some of the most difficult years that you've ever walked through. They certainly have been for me. And I, I sense the Lord take me further, and he said, unless, unless you're free, you cannot offer freedom to other people. See, freedom is a gift that God only gives to his kids, to his children. So if you're not walking in freedom, how can you offer freedom to other people? He saved us for freedom. And he brought my family here. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Because he wanted us to encounter the spirit of the Lord in a richer way so that we would understand how to walk in freedom because when I have freedom when I'm free it impacts the people around me certainly the people of God can see it but when I'm out with people who don't have a relationship with Christ they notice too and the same is true for us so as you are setting aside the things that are holding you down remember God is taking you into a greater area a greater sense of freedom in the spirit and so give yourself over to that and watch what he does because it's going to be better than anything you could ever imagine. Hopefully I can get this out. This uh, glory is so heavy. Um,
the answer that you're asking for is greater works. It's the greater works. The way to do those is out of the secret place. Uh, in this ramp time, in this, uh, in this season in the earth, You know, Jesus wants his church to manifest. He wants us He wants us to accomplish his greater works. He commanded us to accomplish his greater works. He commanded that generation that was there with him to, like, to do that. And in this time and in this in this season, we have open heaven. You can receive anything you ask for. And he's commanding us to do the greater works. Everything that Jesus did in his ministry was from the Father. He didn't do anything of his own. And we now have the Holy Spirit and he doesn't elevate himself or, or, or promote himself. He only instructs us what is the Father's heart and what his word is. So in this season, in order for you to get permanent deliverance and in order for you to get permanent alignment and in order for you to get permanent freedom, we have to make time in the secret place. We have to tithe our day. We give him the time of our day and tithe, and then the rest of it is sanctified. And then out of that secret place, when he shows us his love, that is how we can enact or, or uh, implement all of like the scriptures that we quote that say, if you love us, obey our commandments. If we don't know his commandments, we don't have the, like the word or the faith or, the, or even knowing what the command is to obey. So we need to get in that secret place and we need to speak out of that and we need to let the Spirit show us what is to come ahead of time in our day so that we can walk in the ministry that he's called everyone to and the freedom that he's called everyone to. <laughs> this is his church. This is what he wants. And it's an answer to our heart. He's confirming everything that's happening in your heart. This is the heart of the Father, this is what he wants. <sighs> God is so good. You guys, if you're soaking, if you're in a moment with the Lord, you can stay where you are. Always know that, that God is free to move on you and upon you, however he is doing. I spent many years in Toronto with people laughing and crying and all over the place. So you're not going to distract me. <laughs> so, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you're encountering us in such a sweet way. We thank you that you're giving us your heart. You're sharing with us your heart. We thank you that you're setting us free and that you're calling us into a deeper place of intimacy with you, of surrender, of trust in you so that we can walk more fully in who you've created us to be on the earth. We just, again, you just put your hand on your heart and just say, Holy Spirit, have your way in me. I give you permission. 
I want to walk in that place of communion with you where I only do what I see my Father doing. Yeah, my life is yours. Amen. Amen. I always hate to, like, shift. <laughs> but I do have a good message, guys. <laughs> um, who is doing announcements? Katie, you are? Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> I'm Pastor Jessica. Uh, Pastor Justin is in Kids Church. But um, we just want to welcome you to Vanguard Church. And uh, we just began our 21 days of prayer and fasting last night. And so we just invite you out. If you were not aware that we were meeting in person, we are meeting again tonight in person at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We will be warm today. <laughs> There's a little malfunction with the boiler last night, so we were all dressed in our coats the entire time. <laughs> but it was still a powerful time in the Lord. So, um, yeah, if there's anyone here for the first time, could you just raise your hand? I'm looking around trying to see if I see any first-timers. <laughs> okay, I didn't think I see first-timers. All right, so um, I am going to hand it off then, I guess, to Katie to do announcements. And this is Pastor Katie. Everyone welcome Pastor Katie. <laughs> awesome job on worship. Isn't it fun right now when we have these moments where we're back to just a simple keyboard and a couple voices, you know, it's okay, it's all good, we just do it whatever way it works in this season. So um, I want to just give you a few announcements and then we'll take up the offering. One is um, how Pastor Jessica was talking that we have our ramp going on right now. If you haven't signed up to be a part of that, please do that today. You go to your church center app and if you haven't, connected with Church Center app. Uh, come see me afterwards if you can't figure it out. But we have an app that you go in, you click to the events part, and then you'll see that there's a ramp registration. Register there. If your information's already in our um, database, then it's going to be really easy for you. So it'll be like a click, and you're in. Because what we're going to do is tonight I'm going to send out, I have it ready, um, a Zoom link so that you can Zoom in with us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays of every week, every, every week for the next three weeks. You got that? So Monday through Thursdays is going to be on Zoom from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. So you'll need that link to get in. It's not just a, you can't just like access it from nowhere. You're going to get a link and you're going to be able to sign in from there. Then Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, we will meet here from 7 to 8 o'clock every night. It will also be available um, online through Facebook. I'm not sure about YouTube right now. We're getting ready to change our system. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be, I'm going to declare that it is going to work without a hitch. We're not going to have our online going down five times a service. And uh, we're just believing God that it's going to just work perfectly and smoothly. But anyway, so that will be Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. So please register um, as soon as possible. Also, you know, come out tonight. If you didn't make it last night, come out tonight and just get encouraged. It's so fun when we're together. It's supposed to be one hour, but so many of you guys just hang around longer <laughs> and love each other and fellowship. I tell you, every time we end ramp, people are sad that we don't have that time together every single, you know, sometimes it's every single night when we do it. But this year we're doing it with four days of Zoom. But um, So just want to encourage you to do that. Also, we have for the youth group, which is grades 8 through 12, I just want to tell all you parents, and if there's any uh, young people that are in that age group, we are going to be having a Verve ice skating outing on Saturday, January 22nd. Sorry, i got to do this. No worries. It goes well. i got to get the details or you're going to be... <laughs> So um, it's at, uh, Saturday, January 22nd at 2 p.m. It's going to be at Canal Side, which is in downtown Buffalo. And um, the cost is $15. There will be um, hot drinks and pastries from Tim Hortons. And 
if you need transportation, the important thing is, is that parents need to drop their kids off at Canal Side. If you need your kids to have a ride home, you need to talk to the youth leaders to try to work something out. But for right now, we're going to have parents just drop off and pick up at Canal Side. So maybe you'll just want to stay in downtown Buffalo and hang out at a coffee shop or something that day. And I just lost all of my stuff. So there was one youth more. Group is meeting this Wednesday, correct? Oh, we have youth group this Wednesday, too, that will be here from 630 to 830 in the fellowship hall. If you have any questions about the ice skating or youth group, see Candace and AJ, or and I. And one more thing. We have, this is super important, it's ready, up and running from the Church Center app. We have a registration for our, it's called Authority for Healing and Creative Miracles Conference. Isn't that what we called it? Authority. So, yeah. yeah. Authority, and that means that Chuck Perry is coming from Bethel Reading. He's the director of the healing rooms there, and he's going to be coming and spending the whole weekend with us. He's bringing a team. It's going to be amazing. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever been around Chuck Perry, but uh, I hung out. I was around him a little bit the last time we were in Reading, and uh, he's just a joy ride. <laughs> he's full of presence. He's always overflowing. He goes around during the service, and he just prays over people, and they get wrecked in the Lord. And uh, he's kind of like a banning, or not banning, uh, what's that, George and Banoff George that and I Banoff, love. Yes. Maybe not quite the joy level, but kind of. Yeah, definitely not banning. <laughs> no, but he's all about presence. So I'll tell you what, and he's seen so many miracles happen. So he's going to be uh, releasing that to us, which will be really fun. So you need to register as soon as possible because it's an early bird special for couples. There's a couple's price, which is $80 right now. And then there's um, individuals, it's $50 a person. It goes up when we get close to the date. So um, please register for that. We're also going to have a leader's luncheon on that Friday. It's $40. And we usually get like 100 people out. And yeah. there will be people from all over the region coming. Yeah. So whatever else you want to say about that. Catered. It's catered. Everyday Gourmet, I think, is going to be doing it, we hope. And uh, it'll be really a great weekend. So take Friday off. You say, oh, I, d I work on Fridays. Take the day off. You got like two or three weeks off a year, right? Take one day. Take a personal day. You need it for your spiritual health. All right. <laughs> so good. Oh, we got to do the offering. Oh, yeah, do the offering. All right. Is this working, though? I don't know. It doesn't sound like it is. All right, so let's stand up, and we're going to take up our offering. I hear such enthusiastic people just jumping to their feet. Maybe do a little shout. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Oh, yeah. All right, so you're ready for the end. Okay, here we go. We are a people of his presence, a place of encounter, confident and loving children of God. We are a house of hope, a hospital for healing, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and relationally. We are a regional equipping center to empower every believer with the love and power of Jesus Christ. We offer up our lives afresh today. We give you all that we have. We thank you for giving us the privilege to partner with you. Let our yes bring the salvation and joy of knowing Jesus to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah! <laughs> All right, I'm definitely on. Watch, it's not too loud because my voice does carry. <laughs> um, all right, so man, even just reading that offering declaration, how many of you actually like connect in your spirit when you're saying those words? It is so powerful to me, and I felt almost like this place of just wanting to, to start weeping with that place of let our yes right? The, it's, there's an a invitation from the Lord for us to co-labor with him. What a privilege that is, that he invites us to be his ambassadors, to be his representatives on the earth, right? And, and too much of the time, we're caught up in our own self and our own stuff, but really, he has this amazing call for every single one of us, and, and it depends on our yes, how big is our yes? And so I just felt this like fresh place in myself of like, I want it to be 100% God. I know I've been thinking all the way back to Christmas and the wise men, right? And, and how many of you read the letter in the bag? 
Okay, some of you. If you didn't, you need to read it. I posted it on Facebook too. Um, but I talked about how the wise men came from far, far away, right? It took them, some people said months, some people say years. They don't know how long they journeyed to get to where Jesus was. They stopped their lives. They invested their money. They came with no agenda other than to give honor and glory to the one who was being born. And because they recognized that this, the heavens even had declared his glory, that he was coming. And they weren't even Israelites. They had no you know, uh, benefit or promise of a Messiah or anything like that. They just came because they felt compelled to offer sacrifices, offer gifts to honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords who was so great that the heavens would announce his coming. And I think of David who said, you know, I will not sacrifice to the Lord that which has cost me nothing. And I just keep feeling the, the Lord inviting us and, and it's dependent on our yes, on how much we're willing to give of ourselves, of our lives, of our time, of our plans. You know, we can have our nine to five and have our white picket fence and go on our little vacations and God will love us and bless us, but he has something so much greater than that. He's invited us into being world changers, right? Into being the ones who bring his glory to the earth who reveal his power and his love to the world. But we need to go after it, like Jared was saying, in the secret place. Um, and so I just encourage you again with this ramp time, don't do what's easy and convenient. Really ask the Lord, what do you want me to do for this time? And do it with faith, even if it's hard, right? No matter what he asks. Um, so I want to talk today... Uh, <laughs> Week, week two, <laughs> about our authority, and um, it ties into actually what I'm saying. The title of this message, Kristen, is A Call to Reign, okay, because we have a call to reign in the earth. We are not just called to be saved from our sins. We are not just called to be a people who are blessed, but we are actually called to reign on the earth, and I'm going to talk more about that. Um, you know, a lot of us ask people the question, do you believe in Jesus, right? Because we want to know if people are saved because of if they believe in him or not. And I remember when Katie and I were in Iraq, they said, no, no, you can't ask people that because um, there was like a whole group of people, just like um, Jewish people have their religion and their national identity tied as one. Um, so the Syrians and the Assyrians and, you know, all the different people who live there in Iraq all have different religious affiliations based upon their nationality. So the Assyrians, I believe, were Christian, Orthodox, um, and so they said you can't ask them if they believe in Jesus because they all believe in Jesus. But they don't actually follow Jesus. They don't um, have Jesus as their Lord. They're not born again. They're not spirit-filled. So you have to ask them, are you a believer? And, and I think that's so important. Um, they, they were recognizing, you know, Jesus said, even the demons believe and tremble, right? So it's not about whether we believe in Jesus or we believe in God. That's not the measuring stick. The measuring stick is how much are we submitted to God? How much is he the Lord of our life? And how much does he, uh, is he able to flow in us, but also through us to the earth, right? And that's all based on our surrender, our yieldedness, our oneness with him. And that place of authority, so we've been talking, I remember, um, how many of you remember last, last year, I think it was, God gave me this picture through Justin, prophetically, of the state of New York. And remember, I didn't get it at first. I was like, oh, that's a nice picture. I'm going to hang it somewhere <laughs> in a closet. <laughs> and Justin was all excited. Like, I would be, like, pumped about this picture of New York State, right? And, and so um, 
I got it, and about a week later, I just kind of like set it on the, on the top of the bookshelf in my prayer room, and I was praying, and about a week later, the Holy Spirit, I, I'm sorry, I know the Holy Spirit isn't quite like this, but it always feels like this a little bit to me. How many of you remember Back to the Future? Hello, McFly! <laughs> I feel like that sometimes with the Lord, where he's like, uh, duh, like... <laughs> I didn't just give you that picture to give you the picture. Like, I'm giving you a commission. I'm telling you I've given you the whole state of New York. That's, that's the key to the state of New York, this picture. Imagine if someone came to you and said, you're in charge of New York State. Here you go. How would you feel, right? Like, whoa, that's powerful. And I think we don't recognize the authority and the, the call to reign that we have as believers. And God is inviting us into this place of beginning to understand that and of stepping into that more and more so that we can not just believe in God and not just even be a good person, but that we can actually build his kingdom and reveal his glory on the earth. And so um, I want to ask you this question. You know, when you think about your time, do you live on a mission from Christ? Do you have that awareness? You know, so many times people go on a mission trip and they're amazed. And I think it's powerful. I love Chuck and Helen Todd have that calling from the Lord to bring believers on missions so that they can discover what God can do through them. Because when they shift into that place of intentionality of saying, I'm on a mission from God, my time is 100% his, I'm not here on a vacation, I've prayed into this time, I've prepared myself, I've maybe even fasted, I've been studying about what words I'm going to release, uh, you know, like there's an intentionality, a level of intentionality that we go to when we're going on a mission trip that we're supposed to live with every single day. Because he's called us to live on a mission. We're not citizens of this world, right? I'm, uh, and on paper, I'm a Canadian citizen. <laughs> My brother was like, what? You're still not an American citizen? <laughs> I'm like, no, I haven't done the test and paid the money and all that. <laughs> but I know I'm really a citizen of heaven. That's my nationality, right? I'm not here to fight for Canada or fight for the U.S. or whatever. I'm on a mission from God. And wherever he calls me is where I'm going to be, right? And, and God has called us all to live on missions. So um, I felt like for this year, I told you guys last week, I kept seeing twos. So I'm trying to pay attention and listen always. Like, what is God speaking? What is he saying to me? You know, and I'm, I kept seeing twos and, and just getting these number twos. I told you how even in the white elephant thing, three times in a row. I did three white elephants, and every single time I pulled the number two. And I thought, this is weird. What are the odds of that? <laughs> John told me the odds. It was like, yeah, uh, almost four, one in 4,000 or something like that, that I would get the number two three times in a row in a thing like that. So then I saw this post on Instagram from Lindsay Coyle, the, the prophetess who had sent that very detailed word of our name and wedding anniversary and the city I was born in and, you know, there's a connection between Toronto and Bethel. I should probably just even reread this to you guys for a minute. Uh, how many of you remember this word? Um, because it's important. This word was not just for me. This was for all of us. Um, and this was the last time we did a healing workshop when Chris Gore was here. Um, he just said to Lindsay, she wasn't even here in person, he said, um, this was on December 8th in 2017, okay? So um, four years ago. He just said, I'm, I'm going to New York. If you have any words, you know, send them over. So the first word was name, Jessica. Other names, Judah and Ellie. Those are my kids. Place, Toronto. Date, well, and I'm from Toronto, those of you that don't know. Date, 821. That's our wedding anniversary. You're not going to find that somewhere on Facebook or whatever because, you know, skeptical people who are like, uh, maybe she just Googled you and, you know, 
<laughs> put all this together. Scripture. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3. Word. There is a connection with the Toronto Blessing and Bethel. I went to school at the Toronto Blessing Church, the Toronto Airport Church, and I went to school at Bethel. So obviously, we've lived in both places. I've lived in both places, I should say. There's a connection with the Toronto Blessing and Bethel that will spark a movement in your church. My sense is that God's already spoken to you about what it looks like. Niagara Falls in the Spirit. Even though there is a waiting period and maybe some opposition, in the end, the vision will speak for itself. It will be evident that God's hand is upon you and what he's doing. He is giving you strategies in the secret that you would be pondering in your heart so be encouraged because there is a harvest coming, and it will be obvious that God's hand is on it. There is a Justin in your life that's going to bring covering and will co-labor with you, almost like a partnership, which is so funny. She didn't know we're married and we <laughs> co-lead, right? Um, Chris, if Judah is there, please have Johnny pray over him regarding worship and his presence. If Ellie is there... Please release your father's blessing to her as a daughter. Give her covering to be free to dream big. Oh, if Justin is there, please release this scripture to him. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14. He is going to be a catalyst for a movement there. If he currently wears glasses or contact lenses, you can release this to him as well. God is readjusting his vision to see so that he can partner with what he is doing in the region and pray for his eyes that he'll receive a fresh vision from God and strategies from heaven. And it was like right after that that Justin went into this whole like deconstruction and depression and all of this stuff where his relationship with God was challenged and, and he's come out of it. How many of you were here last night? Put up your hand. It Wasn't it so great? He was so engaged and on fire, and he's so excited. If he was not in the kids' church, we got to pray for a children's pastor <laughs> because he would love to be in here with us uh, more often than he is, but he loves being with the kids as well. So, But just pray for that need because I know I just feel it when he's supposed to be here. I feel we're supposed to co-lead together, and he is a catalyst. Um, but anyway, so I'm seeing twos, and Lindsay posts this thing about Isaiah 22:22, and um, the verse says, "I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them." I want you to think about that. Does that remind you of another scripture? Matthew 16, 19, if you want to turn there quickly. So while you're turning, I'll start reading um, beginning in verse 13. But 19 is the key verse that I want us to study. When Jesus came... To Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples this question. What are the people saying about me, the Son of Man? Who do they believe that I am? They answered, well, some are convinced that you are John the baptizer, because John was dead. Others say you're Elijah, reincarnated, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus asked, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter spoke up and said, well, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are favored and privileged, Simeon, son of Jonah, for you did not discover this on your own, but my father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. I give you the name Peter, a stone, and this truth of who I am will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church. And the power of death, 
will not be able to overpower it. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. And another version says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you release on earth will be released in heaven. So it's this concept of heaven backing us, partnering us. There's other places where Jesus says multiple times, whatever you ask for, when you're in unity with him, when you are one with him, whatever you ask for, you will have. Ask whatever you will, right? And you'll be granted it. And so there's this commission that he's given us. And this is an interesting part as I was studying out that verse because I don't think we really use the keys. He's given us keys of authority, but I don't think we really actually use them. And there's, there's a reason why. It's because our faith is too low. Our faith in his authority and our faith in him in us manifesting in the earth is too little. And here, I'll tell you why. I want you to go, um, go to, I'm jumping around in my notes here. <laughs> go to, um, da, da, da. where is the centurion? Um, oh, go to Matthew 8, verse 5, really quickly. So Jesus returns to Capernaum. A Roman officer comes up to him and pleads with him. And says, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed, and in terrible pain. Which this is amazing to me, that this Roman officer, the centurion, is coming to Jesus on behalf of his servant. Right? What a beautiful heart this man has. Even though he's not a Jew, he really is a man of love. That cares for the people in his household. You know, this is just a servant. This is not his child or anything like that. So he comes to Jesus with a pure heart, with a pure motive, and he says to him, you know, my young servant lies in bed paralyzed and in terrible pain. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. Great! Who doesn't want Jesus to come to their house, right? It, would you want Jesus to come just to your house, right? What does the officer say? No, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. He recognizes who Jesus is so much to the point that he says, you know, I'm not worthy. I, you, you don't even need to come into my house. You shouldn't come into my house. But he says, just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers. And I have authority over my soldiers. So you see the chain of command that he's a part of. He recognizes because he knows what it is to submit to the, the authority of Rome, which was the superpower on the earth at that time. And he knows what it is to be an officer who is over soldiers in the army. And that the backing of Rome, when he speaks, they know they're not just messing with him. They're messing with Rome. So if they don't listen to him, they're in trouble. They're in serious trouble, right? He understands authority. And because he understands authority and he believes in the power of authority, he looks at Jesus and he says, I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. And so he's saying, Jesus, I know if you just say the word, I recognize you're under the authority of the almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And if you just speak the word, however it looks like, maybe he knew about angels, maybe he didn't, but he knew something would happen in the spirit and it would be done. That his commands should be obeyed and would be obeyed. Now I want us to think, the response that Jesus gives, he says, when Jesus heard this. He was what? Amazed. Turn to your neighbor and say he was amazed. 
Turning to all those who were following him, his disciples, he said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch, right? Because he's telling them, they're Israelites who are following him. He's saying, this guy's faith is better than your faith. Right? How many of you would want to hear that? Like, that doesn't feel good. And he says, I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. Um, and he goes on to talk about the Gentiles coming from all over, um, and which is mind-blowing to the Jews. But then he says to the Roman officer, go back home because you believed it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. Now, I believe that if we are able to get a greater revelation of his authority, that our faith of who we are, just like that centurion, right? When he speaks, all of Rome is behind him. He's not just standing there by himself, but Rome is standing there commanding something. So he expects people to obey. Well, when we speak, do we speak recognizing all of heaven, all the angelic armies and the heavenly hosts and the creator of the universe, almighty God, is standing behind us when we declare something and we decree it? Do we believe that? I don't think we really operate from that place, right? But yet God is inviting us into that. He's inviting us to recognize the angels who partner with us. This is the angel of breakthrough. I told you guys this last week that um, she has a key here and there's glory all around. But to recognize that there is a partnership with us if we are on a mission from the Lord to expand his kingdom, if we're on a mission to release his glory on the earth, that the, all of the angelic warriors are with us. They are going. When we speak out a prayer, when we declare a breakthrough, they are sent on our behalf, right? We need to believe this. We need to get this revelation of the reality of who we are in the earth. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, go ahead and turn there really quickly. I will tell you, I had bad teaching about the spirit realm. I had bad teaching about, um, you know, prayer and intercession and my authority and all of that, where um, when I was young, people said, oh, you better be careful what you take authority over and what principality you come against, because if you go against something that you're not strong enough and you don't have enough authority, then um, I've seen people get cancer or I've seen them die or whatever. And so as an 18-year-old, you're sitting there thinking like, uh, I don't want to take authority over anything then. How do I know what I have authority over and what I don't have authority over, right? Because I'm like worried, like if I declare against some principality that's too big, like how do I know which ones I can do? Is it just individual demon on a person or, you know, what, what's the guide here so I don't get myself killed, right? Who's ever heard teachings like that? Okay, so what it did is it shut me down on intercession for quite a while because I was so worried that I would do the wrong thing. And then it was like when I went to Reading, I started to have this revelation that, that Christ is in me, that he has all authority, and if I'm listening to the Holy Spirit and I'm doing what he asked me to do, then why am I afraid? Why am I afraid that if I'm declaring what he says to declare, if I'm praying what he says to pray, right, I don't have to be afraid. I, I was reading one day in Luke. So you're at Luke 10, 19. It says Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, look, I have given you authority. Say authority. Over all the power of the enemy. Hold on. I'm going to do a Winston Noons, a Pastor Noons. Uh, a little bit of the power of the enemy. I've given you authority over some of the power of the enemy. No, I've given you power over uh, just the things that are at your level in the power of the enemy. No. What things? All. What things? All. All the power of the enemy. These were fish. 
fishermen and tax collectors and, you know, unschooled people. They were not amazing leaders of nations or wise people. He gave us, his church, the authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. And read that last line. What does it say? Nothing will harm you. Nothing will injure you. I kid you not, guys. I wrote that verse on my hand with a Sharpie. And I read it to myself over and over for like two weeks because I wanted to get that into my head, the truth that I have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm me. Nothing will harm me. That was right there in scripture, like the lie of what I was taught when I was younger. You better be careful. Watch out what you pray because if you don't have enough authority, you might get killed. <laughs> There's an open door for the devil to mess with me, right? Because I'm believing the lie that the devil and the principalities are more powerful than Christ in me. But what does the word say? Greater is he who's in me than only he that's in the world, meaning what? Your neighbor or your guy down the street, not the principalities and the demonic strongholds on the earth. No. All the darkness in the enemy's kingdom, every power of Satan and hell, he gave us the keys. Remember, we'll jump back for a second to what Jesus said, right? When Simon Peter responded to him, he said, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth what is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. And he said, you, upon you, I will build my church and the power of of death or hell or the gates of hell will not be able to overpower it. Right? Turn to your neighbor and say, that's good news. <laughs> You're really powerful. <laughs> Tell yourself, I'm really powerful. <laughs> okay, so I want to also key in on something from that verse. While I was reading it, th he said, on which I will build my church. Okay, and that word, we talk about the church, you know, it could mean this physical building, it could mean all the people in the building, it could mean, you know, our, our family of brothers and sisters in Christ and whatever. We have all these ideas about what church means, right? But Jesus was not saying that when he said the word church. That word, actually, I read some commentaries where they said that's, it shouldn't be translated that way. It should be translated some other way because it does not convey to us what Jesus was saying. Jesus used a secular word, ecclesia. Upon my ecclesia, I will build. And do you know what ecclesia was? It was the governing body, the legislative body over a city. So you remember when uh, Paul was preaching against the um, people worshiping the goddess Diana, and everybody rose up, and he cast a demon out of the girl who knew everything, and everybody rose up and wanted to kill them, right? There was a big mob, and they said, we got to bring them before the city government, basically. And there they would be told what to do with them. That word was ecclesia. We have to bring them before the ecclesia to determine what to do with Paul. And Jesus took a secular word that is an office of government that reigns and rules over a region or a territory, and he called his church by that name. He said, you're my governing body who is to reign over a region, over a territory. I'm giving you authority over the earth, right? Which we know we should read Genesis right at the beginning, right? What did God say when he put man on the earth? Go have dominion right? He wanted us to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. As his people, we are the ones who are called to govern the earth, to rule and reign over all the spiritual realm and the things that are going on on the earth. So when we look at 
what's happening with COVID, when we look at what's happening with our government, I have some testimonies. I know I've told you these before, but I'm going to remind you this past year. So God gave me the picture of New York, so I had more faith. Okay, wow, I have authority over New York. You know, so I started praying specifically about New York and taking authority over things in New York State. And I remember we had to, um, for Bill Johnson to come, and I knew God wanted Bill Johnson to come and release what he carried to our region. And for him to come, they said, well, there can't be any quarantining. He, he doesn't have enough time in his schedule to sit in a hotel for five days or four days or ten days or however many days. There's got to be no travel restrictions. When he comes, he needs to just be able to come. And there was travel restrictions. So I told the guy, his assistant guy, just give us to the middle of March. It was January. I'm like, please, just give us to the middle of March. I feel in my spirit something is going to shift. And then I went after that, and I started praying into that and declaring, those travel restrictions are going to be lifted in Jesus' name, right? And we prayed into that. And guess what happened? If you look up the dates, you can look it up. On, like, March 11th, they lifted all the travel restrictions for New York State. So I was able to write the guy on March 14th or 15th and say, okay, we're all clear. Bill can come, you know. And so I, I was believing, praying with faith that God would do that because he's given me New York, right? Then the next thing, we're talking about, you know, what are we going to do? with mask and no mask and you know it's going to totally hinder bill releasing healing and worship and all this stuff happening if we're all spaced out and limited in our number and have masks on our face and whatever that's just not going to be welcome to the kingdom of god healing you know power conference right so we're like ah! <laughs> we can't do it but the tab was like we're going to obey the rules so you know we, we have to wear masks Right up to the week of the conference, we're praying. We're like, this cannot be. We need something to shift, God. Change the mandate, whatever, you know. And that, that very week of the conference, they changed the mandate where they said, if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. And then the tab said, well, we're not checking who's vaccinated and who's not, so it's on you. So they said, we can do the conference with no mask, right? Isn't that amazing? The, the law in our state was actually hearing what we were declaring in the timing that we were declaring it to happen for what we knew God wanted to accomplish on the earth. And things lined up to allow that to happen. We didn't just pray at one time, right? We didn't, we didn't just say it. I mean, I believe God's going to grow us in our faith to where it is. One, one time we declare it and it happens. But we need to be like that widow who perseveres and perseveres until we get that answer, right? Because if we really, 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 really believe that God is going to answer and the heavens are going to move, that we have authority when we speak, the angelic warriors are released, eventually, right, something is going to break through. And we're not going to stop praying until it does. And that's been our problem I'm going to be honest, just like when Jesus looked at his disciples and said, I haven't seen faith like this. You guys don't have faith like this. We need to be okay to tell ourselves, you know what, my faith level is down here. God, I got to grow my faith. I need to get in the secret place, get a greater revelation of you and your authority, and I need to be able to walk in that place. I don't want to be okay with unanswered prayer. I don't want to just say, oh, well, it didn't happen. We prayed, but it didn't happen, right? How often do we do that? We pray for a little bit, and then we're like, well, didn't get the breakthrough, but guess it's not God's will. Wasn't the timing, whatever. Well, did you really believe it was God's word then? Did you really press in in prayer? And I'm not going to say there aren't times that sometimes it doesn't happen. So that becomes then our rule where we're like, oh, the one time that I prayed and it didn't happen, I fought and I pressed in and it didn't happen, then we make that our guide for the rest of our time. We're only going to give this much effort because, you know, if it doesn't happen quickly, it's probably not going to happen. And, and we lower our faith, we lower our expectation, we lower our belief because we don't want to be disappointed. Right? Disappointed. We thought it was appointed, and then it wasn't happening. 
and we became disappointed. And what does that turn into? I heard Bill Johnson one time preach, and this was key for me. He said, for a leader to learn how to deal with disappointment, it, it will determine the course of their life, whether they will survive and thrive in ministry or whether they will end up quitting and giving up. And that same goes for all of us as believers. Will we live a victorious life? Will we live an overcoming life? Will we expand his kingdom? It depends how we deal with disappointment. We have to be able to surrender the things we don't understand, the times it didn't work, and we have to start fresh and say, you know what, I don't get that, but I trust you. And I'm going to live by your word, and I'm going to believe in your word, and I'm going to go after your word with my whole heart, no matter what, because I believe you want this. And if we don't believe anymore that what we hear really is God, what do we have left? nothing. We're going to live aimlessly. We're going to wander. We're going to stray into sin, right? When it says without a vision, the people perish. It's, it's without a continual place of recognizing what God is speaking. Like Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. My words are not my own words, but they're the words of him who sent me. He lived on a mission, and so he stayed completely tapped in to the Spirit of God and the leading of God. And we need to be that people. God is calling us to be that people. So we are going to begin to go after some declarations. Um, I'm just going to shift into that because I know it's 12 o'clock and the Bills have a game and everybody's... <laughs> oh, it's not till 4? Oh, forget it then. <laughs> okay, good. Yay! Okay, Revelation 5. Really quick, go to Revelation 5. Because this is um, really important. Revelation 3, there's only three places that they talk about keys. And so Isaiah 22, 22 is one. Matthew 16, 19, one. Revelation 3 is one, where he's talking to the church of Philadelphia and encouraging them to overcome and persevere that they've gone through craziness and, and hardship in the world. Um, and so then we get into Revelation 5, which we read during the Christmas Eve service. How many of you were really touched when DeMar read his reading and then that hallelujah song came right after? How, who felt God on that? That was so powerful. Um, so we're going to look at this really quickly because when we begin something, we always need to have the end in mind. Right? What are we going after? What are we building towards? You know, who, who would start building a building without knowing what it's going to look like at the end and how, what you need, how much it costs, all the materials? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just go start digging a hole in the ground. You'd be like, uh, okay, let's get an architect. Let's make some drawings. Let's check out all the prices of materials. What do we need to buy? You know, and you would have a good estimate. And God says that we're called to do that as, as Christians. We're supposed to take uh, an evaluation of what it is that God is asking of us and what we're willing to invest into it, right? So when he gives us this word of he is asking us to reign on the earth, he is asking us to represent himself, to be glory carriers, to release his presence, to help people be saved and delivered from darkness, and set free and chains broken off of them, what is that worth to you? Is it worth giving up some food once in a while? Is it worth giving up your TV show at night? Is it worth giving up Facebook? What is it worth to you to be that person, to be the body of people who reigns on the earth and who brings in the kingdom of God? So, yes, yes. Hopefully it's worth a lot more than that. You're willing to give it all. So, okay, Revelation 5, verse 7. I just want us to get a vision of heaven. And you know what? Actually, you guys shut your eyes, and I'll read it to you. Okay, I want you to picture in your head while I'm reading. This is talking about the end. As we're moving towards the end of all time, and 
and what is going on in the throne room. And it, it opens up with the lament of who is worthy to open up the scroll. Who is worthy to open the book of life? And no one was found worthy, right? They're weeping that no one was found worthy until they saw the Lamb, Jesus. And so I'll begin at verse 7. It says, I saw the young Lamb approach the throne and receive the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat there. And when the 24 elders and the four living creatures saw the Lamb had taken the scroll, they fell face down at the feet of the Lamb and worshipped him. Each of them had a harp and golden bowls brimming full of sweet, fragrant incense, which are the prayers of God's holy lovers. And they were all singing this new song of praise to the Lamb. Because you were slaughtered for us, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Your blood was the price paid to redeem us. You purchased us to bring us to God out of every tribe, language, people group, and nation. You have chosen us to serve our God and formed us into a kingdom of priests who reign on the earth. Do you hear the mission of heaven for you? Do you hear that every prayer is collected in heaven? All of the prayers of the saints were in golden bowls, brimming with sweet, fragrant incense. And God, God has redeemed us and chosen us to serve our God, not to live for ourselves, not to live for our own pleasure and our own desire, but to serve our God and formed us into a kingdom of priests who reign on the earth. And I love the note on that. It said the pr it's the present tense of the Greek verb, which indicates that the reign of the believers on earth has already begun. And there's tons of uh, commentaries and, and things that will corroborate that. So hear that. The reign of believers on the earth has already begun. We are, there are people all over the world, God has, who are in the secret place, who are speaking out the purpose of God, who are decreeing and declaring in their region, in their uh, state, in their nation, the plans of the Lord. And angelic warriors are going forth on their behalf so I just want us to, to grab a hold of that vision and just hear this one last verse, James 4, verse 7. You know it really well. It says, Submit yourselves to God and resist against the devil, and what will happen? He will run away. Seriously. Katie, come here. <laughs> uh... Are you in heels? I'm in heels. Yeah, I can. I'll be the devil. It's fine. Oh, you can yeah. be God. <laughs> All right. So submit. You want to submit yourself to God. Okay. So I'm bad. I'm going to be bad. Okay. Now you're going to resist the devil. Resist me. <laughs> that submission is key to walking in our authority, right? We know it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we need to have this place of submission. And I love that um, it's not just submission to God, because I've dealt with so many people that are like, God told me this, you know, <laughs> Katie will testify 
Like, you can't argue with someone when they're out of submission to people around them, right? How many times have you seen a husband and a wife where one is arguing, saying, God said this, and they won't submit? What does the word say? I remember reading this as a young wife. It says, if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and her husband will not allow it, what does the Lord say to do? Submit to your husband. But the Lord will credit you as if you did it. He sees your heart. But unity of a husband and a wife is that important to God that he would say, you know what, I told you to do that, but you didn't because your husband said no, and, and I honor you as though you did it. That's how important it is for a husband and a wife to be united to God. Okay, so submission has become a dirty word today, right? Nobody wants to hear submit. Wives don't want to hear it. Husbands don't like it. They don't want to submit to their wives because it says that in the scripture too, and to lay down your life like Christ laid down his life for the church, right? So <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. Submission to uh, children, to parents, right? That's gone crazy. That is not taught. That is not encouraged. Um, submission, you know, in our church to a leader, submission in our schools, to our teachers, submission even in our workplace. Chaos in the fabric of society results when we refuse to submit. Because everyone is fighting against everyone and it destroys the unity. What did God say when we're united? Nothing will be impossible. This is pre-Holy Spirit, pre um, Jesus in the beginning, when you look at the Tower of Babel, it says God came down and looked at the sons of men and what they were doing, and he said, we have to divide them because when they're united, nothing will be impossible for them. And over and over, God talks about the unity of the Spirit. I think it's so fascinating. I actually think that's one of the reasons why speaking in tongues is a thing, because humanity united against God required the scattering of our language and the breaking up of that connection in language. And so one of the manifestations that God gave that was a sign and a testament that we were united and reunited as people was that people, when they spoke, they spoke as though they were speaking another language. Like people in Jerusalem heard them in their own language. We don't know if they were speaking one language, you know, Peter was preaching in whatever, you know, uh, some language from Ethiopia, and they heard it who were from Ethiopia, but it said all the people heard it in their own language. In that day when the Spirit of God was poured out, and I know I've had times where, you know, I've spoken in earthly languages, but there's something about the unity of the Spirit it talks about the power of the unity of the Spirit. And so um, submitting to God, submitting in marriage, submitting children to parents, uh, which includes honoring our parents, um, submitting all over the place, it's so important. Workplace, schools, because it's the testimony of Jesus and the nature of his kingdom. I remember hearing Bill Johnson say this, the way that we honor someone else doesn't speak about them, it speaks about us. Let that sink in. Because sometimes we're like, well, no, I'm only going to honor my parents if they're good and they're godly and they're awesome. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say honor your father and mother who are perfect and amazing. What did he say? Just honor your father and mother. And if you do, it will go well with you. You'll have a long life. You'll be blessed in the land, right? So this thing of submission and honor and honoring one another, being submitted to one another, but also allowing godly leadership in our lives, healthy leadership, we have to have that in place. Um, otherwise, we have chaos. And I think it's fascinating that what one of the main verses, right, when we're talking about revival being poured out and we're praying, Luke 1, 17, it's really from Malachi, but uh, he, they prophesied it over John the Baptist. They said, um, 
He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. How does he prepare the way for the coming of the Lord? He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly or turn the hearts of the children back to their fathers. This issue of submission and, and honor and unity is so critical. So I just want to encourage us to go after understanding our authority, being submitted to our authority, but also then recognizing as we walk humbly in that place of authority and leadership that God has given to us, we can expect heaven will back us. When we're not submitted to heaven, God will resist us. When we're not submitted to our spouse or to our leaders or to, you know, those relationships that God has placed in our life that deserve honor, God will resist us. So we need to go after that area. Um, so that's it. I, I have one last thing we're going to do. It takes one minute and 45 seconds. I felt like, and for us to understand this, that our words are so powerful what we say, it, I know I've heard the saying, our words create worlds, right? And one of the ways that we can explore in faith what happens when we begin to say things and declare things in faith with our authority is by experimenting, right? We want to experiment with our faith and see, can we get more breakthrough? Can we come into a greater place so I as I was praying I've been praying about this since November actually I felt like God invited us into an experiment with him he wants us to have more faith he wants to build our faith so he's saying okay try this and see what happens pay attention okay so we're gonna make some declarations the people who were at ramp last night heard it and I encourage you if you miss a session go re-watch it because Powerful things are going to be released every single time. But we're going to say these declarations every day during ramp, but also Sunday morning. So let's stand up. And do this from a posture, like I said, of God inviting you to see what he will do as you speak out in faith, as you respond to his invitation where he says, ask me, just declare these things and see what happens. See what will happen. So let's declare this together. Knowing there is no lack in your kingdom and believing that you are a good father who loves to provide for his children, we declare blessing and increase, debts paid off, and abundant resources for achieving your kingdom purposes. We are believing you for financial and tangible provision and breaking off old habits and mindsets. We ask you for divine wisdom to steward the more so we can reign in finances. We declare it is your heart to heal and we will see supernatural healing in bodies, emotions, and relationships on a daily basis. Jesus' blood paid for everything. You are creator God and our Papa, so we declare we have divine creativity to solve problems, to design and invent, and to create and compose. We receive your creative power and flow in all areas of our lives. We are a prophetic people, and we declare we are called to equip this region and beyond in hearing, seeing, and walking in your spirit. We ask for more visions, prophetic dreams, words for others and ourselves, and anointing to help those around us know you more. Take us up in the spirit more than ever before and reveal your glory here. We declare we will walk in our authority in Christ we will take back territory and expand your kingdom. We will set the captives free 
and move in greater boldness than we have ever before. Amen. <laughs> All right. So if you don't have your books, please make sure you grab books. I didn't get to explain about the testimonies, but it's on the video last night. So watch the video if you missed last night. This is very important.